Hello and welcome back to the Reapers. So another educational video, one that's been asked for, requested quite a lot. Um, again, I'll be putting it off, but time to get on with it. It is the sensor re-equipment, i.e. the radar and the electrical optical system of the SU-27 flanker, which is very similar, if not exactly the same. I think, in fact, it is the same exact radar uh, in the SU-33 and the MiG-29. So we're going to basically bundle it all into one video. So we'll just do it from the position of the SU-27. So first of all, um, we look at the radar, uh, pulse Doppler radar. What is a pulse Doppler radar? Well, I'm not going to sit here for 30 minutes and explain it because I've already done it. So if you want to know more about the, um, the kind of physics and uh, engineering side of the radar um, within a kind of limited scope, I've done already some big videos on that in the educational section. Look for F-15C. Uh, using the pulse Doppler radar and F-15C, uh, I think, uh, radar training tool. You can use that and that uh, applies uh, almost completely to this radar because they're the same generation, the F-15 and the flanker and the MiG-29 and it's uh, they're all very similar. So um, all we need to know, apart from that, just to roughly describe it, the radar beam is that. If you imagine, um, this is the aeroplane here, uh, pointing out the front of the aeroplane is a slice of cake um, vertically wise the slice of cake is uh, pretty thin about 10 degrees if you like it covers so it comes from the, the nose of the aeroplane if you like if we come out here if we've got a pointer no we haven't but it comes from the nose of the aeroplane and comes out like a piece of cake um, so emanating from the nose and then splaying out and splaying out like that Vertically, it's very narrow, only about 10 degrees of vertical covers. Uh, laterally, so that's left and right. I'm not sure what the um, uh, degrees is that it covers in the flank. I thought it was 80 degrees. It may be 60 degrees or it may be maybe more. I'm not sure. But so imagine a slice of cake, about 80 degrees left to right. Um, so that's what we're dealing with. Um, and that is our radar beam. And that's what we can see, essentially. Again, more details in the other videos with proper descriptions. So go see that first if you want a proper description. So now actually using it. Uh, obviously, the pulse stop the radar is for sensing uh, aircraft. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do is turn it on and uh, see what we can see in this flanker. So let's set it going. Uh, right, so, that's, uh, so in the F-15 we have a little uh, MFD display down here where my cursor is, uh, that is the radar screen. The radar screen on the SU-27 is um, superimposed onto the HUD, which is pretty useful because in the F-15 you have to be heads down looking down here in the flank roaming 29. It's all displayed up here. It's pretty clever stuff really. So what can we see? Let's zoom in a little bit. Uh, right, we've got some contacts here, some radar returns. First of all, let's just look at uh, the display. 100, uh, so that's 100 kilometers. So that is the current scan range that we've got set up. Now, um, or, or, or at least uh, the scan, uh, it's actually the scale range. Uh, the scan range of the radar is uh, essentially infinite. The radar beam heads out and uh, essentially goes to the end of the universe. It never stops. Uh, so what this range actually means is how far uh, we are looking on our display. That's all it actually means. Um, so currently we've got 100 and we can change that by using the scan distance plus or minus. So we've got 50, 25, 50, 100, 200 and so on. Uh, so that's that. Um, now interestingly if we go down here we have our top down view of the radar. Um, so all the information we've got there is also shown down here where we can get a little bit more information it's a top view it's a really useful tool um, I wish all planes had such a useful tool uh, so we've got our information translated down here we've got uh, target one target two target three and um, and a friendly that is spotted there so first of all how to identify friend or foe a post Doppler radar can determine in this aircraft whether it's friend or foe ie it can request IFF information from the plane and it's found that is for uh, hostile, 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 and friend. So we know it's hostile because it's only one layer of dots. One layer of dots, that's one one layer of dots, that's one layer of dots. So they're hostile. This one is a friend. You know that because it's got two layer of dots. So two, uh, two dots there and two dots there. So why are these three and why are these two dots? These are three uh, because that is the representing, the amount of dots represents the wingspan of the aircraft. So if it was just one dot on its own, it'd be a very, 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 very uh, small wingspan, maybe like a cruise missile or something. If it was two dots, like this one here, then it's your average size kind of fighter intercept type plane. If it's three dots here, 
then it's a uh, kind of a small transporter slash commercial plane maybe a mm, 737 or something would show up as three dots and if it's four dots then it's a large commercial transport plane c5 galaxy large illusion something like that so that's that and then let's look down here um, if it's a hostile it's shown as just kind of um, uh, like a t if you like and obviously this it shows the vector so that one's heading that way that one's heading that way that one's heading that way um, and uh, if it's a friend then it's a, a t with a circle on it you see it's numbered them one two three and four I don't know how it's prioritized them um, maybe someone else will know better than me uh, I'm not a flanger driver so I only know the bare bones essentials basically which is what we'll be looking at today um, so that's that and there's us down there we're obviously shown as a friendly um, regarding range as uh, so we've got a little bit of uh, critical information here first of all uh, to get this uh, radar view up we're in beyond the visual range mode uh, so we have our tactical speed shown which is our true speed so 530 true kilometers per hour there um, and um, that's our scale there that there is our key to show how 20 nautical miles so these guys are about 60 nautical miles 80 something like that and that guy's about 20 uh, so that is that oh one thing uh, of interest um, these planes these flankers have an excellent tool called data link and um, if we were to uh, if we couldn't see these targets uh, I'll tell you what would be a better idea. Let me aim my radar up so I can no longer see these targets. Stand by. Go over that in a second. Okay. So I've got my radar on, but I've aimed it up. I've attenuated it upwards slightly. And I can no longer see the target because my slice of cake, which is my radar, is aimed above those targets. Um, and I can't see them, but my radar's still on. Now, if uh, we had a data link capable AWACS or EWR, so if we had an AWACS circling out there 100 miles away, that would link information about those targets which it could see to us and then for, therefore those targets would still be available on this screen even though I couldn't see them on my particular my own radar really useful tool incredibly tactically useful and I wish the F-15 had it um, so that's something to bear in mind um, in reality I think um, flankers can data link with other flankers in DCS that's not modeled, modeled it's only AWACS and EWR ground stations Right, so let me put our radar back. Uh, well, now's a good time to look at the attenuation. Oh, and this scale, this um, thing here also scales with our distance scale. So let me just show you that quickly. Let's try and find the targets again. There they are. Zoom out, zoom in, zoom in, zoom out. So that's that. Next is um, our radar is essentially a radar dish in the front of the plane. And you can move it. You can wiggle it left. You can wiggle it right. You can wiggle it up. You can wiggle it down up and down I call elevation or uh, uh, yes yes sorry, it's radar elevation it can, we can look it up and we can look it down um, we can go up in increments uh, now I forget what the increments are but if we look on our HUD here and we look on that little dash there that is showing us at the moment our elevation of the radar um, if you go into your key bindings you can set up key binding to slew it up and down so let's do that slewing up 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 I think every time we go up, that's 10 degrees up. I think that's right. Up, up, up. And we can go down, 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 down. And you'll notice, obviously, when we're pointing it down or up, it can no longer pick up the targets, which are essentially in front of me. So um, when we put it back to centre, our slice of cape is now pointing directly forward and picking up those targets, we are up, which are at the same altitude as me. So that is radar elevation, and that is showing you the different types of uh, radar returns that you can get. Okay, so next I think we'll look at PRF, or Pulse Repetition Frequency. Uh, this, uh, there is this option, or a very similar option, on all modern radars. So, and I'm not going to uh, describe it in detail here, because again, in the F-15 video it covers it in more, much more detail. But, because of the nature of the Pulse Doppler effect, um, there, this radar sees things coming that are coming towards us a lot better than it sees things that are heading away from us in a set mode so it just so happens all of these planes I think I've set them up so they're all coming towards me so we can see them pretty easily but if one of them say this guy was heading away from us there's a good chance our radar simply wouldn't pick him up due to the how the pole stopper effect works um, now if that's the case and you've got a good hunch that a hostile is heading away from you and you can't see it on the radar the good idea is to cycle your PRF pulse uh, repetition frequency. But by changing the frequency, um, it allows you to see targets that are a different aspect easier. 
So let me have a look at that. Stand by. So I'm gonna. So I bound it to this key. I'm gonna press this key now. You can see it's now up here changed to high. So it's high pulse repetition frequency. And if we were to change it again, medium. And now we're uh, sending out medium frequency. Now, I forget whether it's high or medium that helps um, see targets that are moving away. So you'd have to research that yourself. But one of those helps seeing targets that are on a cold aspect away from you. And that is an essential tool to have because a lot of the time hostiles will be flying away from you. And you will need to cycle that tool in order to find the hostile. Uh, so let me put that back. There we go. Right, next, uh, let's see the difference between STT and TWS lock. So, um, I'm using the, um, the F15 abbreviations of this. We call it STT is what I call a full single lock. Uh, so, if we want to target just one target, when we want to put all of our energy into that, beaming that one target for that perfect missile shot, that's an STT lock. Let's have a look at that then. So, we know we've got STT on. Um, in a flank or in a Russian plane, it's called SCN. I just call it STT because that's how I got it memorized. Um, so we know we've got it there because it says it there. Now we want to move our tar target designator box, which is that one there, and you can set up the bindings to slew that left, right, up and down in the controls over the radar contact that we're interested in. So let me go and do that. I'm interested in that one. And then I'm going to press the target lock button, which I've got set up as well. Target lock. There we go. Uh, now, I'm not going to go over the, the firing information because that's going to be a different video. All I'm showing you here is that we have locked onto the target with an STT lock. Um, the STT lock means we get a good solid lock and it's hard for the hostile to break that lock, but, and we can fire a missile, but um, because there's so much energy coming from our radar to that hostile, that hostile can detect that we are locking them. And that can be a tactical disadvantage for us. We may want to be stealthy. So that's an STT lock. Uh, now, um, if I'm going to do a TWS lock, a track was scan lock, um, slightly different, again explained properly in my 15 videos, it's where we send out a lesser uh, radiation beam to the target, um, a, a lesser so that he cannot detect that I'm locking him, even though technically I still do have a lock uh, on him, and it also allows us to uh, scan in the background even while we're locked. But the important thing is, it's, it's that we can lock him and him not tell that we're locking him. So that's very, it gives us a tactical, stealthy type advantage. And that's going to do that quickly. And pause. So let's just uh, reset our radar, turn it off and back on. And now we press, I've got it set up as a U key, you may have it set up as something else. So we've got our TWS here, and we can go ahead and target someone and lock them up again. Bosh, there we go. Okay. So we've gone over the PRF, we've gone over the range, we've gone over the different uh, TWS STT. Um, that's this uh, 10 here. I forgot. I forget what this 10 means here. If anyone knows, let me know because I've forgotten. We're not going to do any other information here because that's covered in and going to cover that in another video. Uh, slewing. So I've uh, been over about, uh, uh, talked about slewing the elevation of the radar up and down, uh, but in this type of radar, uh, we can also slew it left and right. So let's have a look at that, shall we? Unpause. Let's just turn ourselves back to STT lock. So um, have a look at this dash here. You see there, I slewed it left. So what we've done there is turned our entire dish around to the left. And I don't know how many degrees that is because I'm just not familiar enough with the flanker. I'd guess 30 to 40 degrees, something like that. But that's what we've done. And now we can essentially look out the side of the plane like that and get a bigger scope of um, what, what we can see. So we can pick up guys right to the side here. And I think this gives us, by using this slew, this gives us... Um, a huge kind of, um, if you like, remember our cake, uh, left to right kind of size of our cake, a huge angle, probably more than the F-15 can um, can see. Um, and in, indeed, you can see it down here as well. You can see how we're slewed to the left here, now that's slewed to the right. So back to the middle and then to the right. So you can see when we're slewed to the right, we can't see that these targets are over here anymore because we, we're picking up this. Now, if this angle is... Um, uh, anything accurate so from there to there and there to there that's what kind of 50 to 60 degrees that leads us to believe that the flanker might be 60 degree uh, cone of, of view uh, this may not be accurate though so I can't I can't say that for sure let's put that back another thing I need to go for is the range so 
We've got our range here to set to 100. Um, I should have mentioned this earlier. So that means that that is 80, that is 50, that is sorry, that is 60, that is 40, that is 20, that is 0. And you can see this, these dots here, being, these contacts have been getting closer and closer and closer. That's because their range is relative to where this, uh, these markers are on this scale. Um, so let's have a look at that a little more. So they're about 50 kilometers. And if I were to zoom in, there are 50 kilometers there. If I were to zoom out, this is 200, then 50 kilometers there's, is there. So it's a really nice nifty radar tool up on the HUD here. We can see all the information, where all the targets are, all of the azimuths, and how close they are um, to us. Um, now, let's just go over a quick bit of radar information we can get from the targets. Um, so let us unpause. Let's go and lock one of them up on an STT full lock and pause. We can get some information about the hostile there because we've, uh, we're, we're shooting laser beams at him and getting the return and analysing it, we know exactly what that hostile is doing. First of all, we can tell his azimuth. That arrow there says that he's pointing towards us, slightly to the left. If it was pointing away, then it would mean that the hostile aspect is cold. Um, and uh, we've determined that through the post-doppler effect. Uh, this up here is the uh, hostile's true speed in kilometres an hour. We know the hostile is going 560 kilometres an hour. This up here is the uh, target's ASL altitude in metres. We know that our target's doing 3,047 metres. So that's some good information that we've got from the target. Um, there's more information here, but we're going to do that in another, another video. Okay, I think that is covered, the, um, maybe possibly not everything, but the basics, the bare bones of what you need to know to operate the radar properly in both of the flankers and the MiG-29. Now we need to go and look at the optical, uh, electrical optical mode. So the electrical optical is this uh, thing on the end of the nose here. Let's see if we can have a better look. You see that that, that ball in front of the pilot? Uh, it's effect, essentially a glorified uh, seeker head from a, from a sidewinder or a heat-seeking missile. Um, and it's completely passive. It doesn't emit anything. It just listens. And it listens to radiation of the infrared band, uh, what me and you call heat. Um, and it's so it's scanning the horizon, and it has a lovely Kona scan. Again, I don't know the... Um, I don't know the left and right, and I don't know the up and down of how it scans. I'd probably say 90 left and right, 90 up and down in total, but that may be slightly wrong. And um, it can detect hostiles. Now, it's beautiful because it's passive, and passive with a radar, with a post doppler radar turned on, um, hostiles can detect that we are here because they can detect our, our radiation with their RWRs, and we've got a video about that in our educational section. This is completely passive, so we can scan all day, and the hostiles will have no idea that we're here. We're not emitting any radiation. Really useful tool. Uh, now, it's not as um, efficient as a radar. A radar can see a target 100 miles away. Uh, this cannot see a radar at 100 miles. This cannot see a target 100 miles away. It's a lot closer. I'm not really sure. I'm not that familiar with how its maximum range. I guess it depends on the environment, the heat, the ambient clouds etc uh, i guess probably 20 ish miles something like that uh, but it's useful because of the reasons that we spoke about now let us go and uh, i'm going to go and find a target just so you can see us using it on bvr mode which is what we're going to use for this video stand by right so let us turn our radar off with i and turn our electrical optical on with o So we're in BVR mode again. Um, we've got our EO, our electrical optical system is turned on. Our radar is turned off. Um, and we've got a similar type of um, uh, display here. Um, it's going to show targets that it picks up with its electrical optical. Um, now we cannot slew it. Um, it just it looks um, in its static location. We cannot slew it to there. We cannot slew it to the right. We cannot slew it up, and we cannot slew it down. Um, but it does have a very good angle, left and right, and up and down. So you probably wouldn't need to anyway. Right. I need to go and find um, find someone now, so that I find a heat signature, so that I can show you what it looks like. So stand by as I go and find someone. Right. Welcome back. So I found someone finally. Um, like I said, the range isn't as high as the radar, so it can be a little more difficult. Um, so, uh, we've got a IR return, and it is right there, um, if we look there. Um, in fact, you can actually see him because we've got so close. The reason why we've got so close is because it's a uh, small passenger plane. It has a very low heat signature. The range at which we can find someone uh, with our EO is um, basically, essentially, a mixture of the aspect and the heat of their engines. 
In this case, it was a uh, hot aspect, uh, which means that we were facing away from his engines, and he had very cold engines. Uh, so if that was a fighter plane with afterburners, we would have seen him from absolutely miles away. In this case, we had to get kind of five or six miles away. Same thing, um, three dots, that tells us the wingspan of the aircraft, so we've got that. Uh, what we're going to go and do now is lock him up, so stand by as I try and get that working. Again, target designator over that return there, lock it. And we are now locked, and there's no radar, no pulse Doppler stuff here, it's purely electrical optical. So he has no idea that we're locking him. We're not transmitting any energy, we're purely just receiving his uh, his IR radiation. So it's a really awesome tool, very strong tool for the flanker. Um, so that's that. So uh, yeah, simple as that. And Bosch, you're ready to fire a missile. Um, you can also launch even where you've got a lock with EO. You can also launch a radar guided missile from this. Uh, it will turn on essentially as soon as you launch your ra radiation uh, guided missile. It will turn on the radar and transfer slew the lock over to the radar. Um, uh, only thing to talk about, same information, sorry, I should have said, um, you've got the speed, you've got the um, the altitude, you've got the aspect, you can get all that information from the passive IR radiation. One thing to point out, beware, passive, this is a passive system, it cannot interrogate the IFF of the plane, it cannot tell whether it's hostile or friendly, and this is a great source of uh, problems, especially on the public uh, servers that are on DTS, um, people often shooting down their friends. So, um, th like I said, it, we've locked onto this guy, but it hasn't at any point attempted to IFF. It just assumes that they're hostile. So how do we are going to check? So if you lock someone up on EO, if you ever lock someone up when you've got your EO active, you have to then turn on your radar to do an IFF check, unless you specifically know for some reason that is a hostile. So, we're going to do, do that now. Uh, unpause. So we're behind the aircraft now. It says he's a hostile. How do we know it says it's hostile? Because it was a single line of dots there, and here, where it uh, designates whether it's host uh, this is a friendly fire indicator, A, or the Russian A, means it's hostile. Uh, but we can't assume it's hostile, we have to check with our radar, so we're going to do that. Stand by. And pause. Radar on. How do we know we've got our radar on? It says ILL. That's how we know we've got our radar on. And it's still coming up with an A, that means uh, hostile. If it was AFR, that would mean it's friendly. So never shoot once you've done your radar check. Um, always, if it's AFR, that's a friendly, don't shoot. If it's A, once you've got your ILL on, so if you see ILL and A, you're good to shoot. So at this point, I can unpause, turn the radar off, and I can go and shoot the blighter down. Woo! As I goes out, shooty, shooty. Boom. And um, we're going to do. I'm going to do a proper uh, weapons video next, anyway. So we'll go over that. So just a key thing, and I'll drum it in again. If you get an EO lock on someone, great. Put your radar on. It only has to be for half a second. Check your AFR A. If it's A, you're good to shoot. Simple as that. IFF is very simple in DCS. In reality, it's incredibly complicated and unreliable. But in DCS, thank God, it's nice and simple. Right, so we've covered the electro-optical system and we've covered um, the, the radar in BVR mode. So that'll do for that. I'm going to go and make a video now that shows all the different HUD modes with the various radars and the weapon systems. It's going to be a long old video. Until then, I hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you later.